mass spectrometer. Now that electric and magnetic fields have been discussed, it's time to show an application it uses both, and that will be the mass spectrometer. It separates out atoms and molecules based on their mass, and we can also use it to analyze the physical makeup of unknown substances in terms of the relative concentrations tells you how many of each of their parts. The first part of a mass spectrometer is the velocity selector. The substance to be analyzed is charged and injected into the left side of the velocity selector. We have an electric field directed vertically up and a magnetic field that is perpendicular to it and directed out of the page. There is a slit on the right side, really not showing it here, but it's something like this, and it only allows particles that are undeflected by the two fields to pass through. Uh, we'll explain all these arrows on the coming slides, but if it, you have a particle going like this, it gets stopped by this little wall here. We only take the ones that go through without being deflected. We have fields that have forces, and we have a particle that we want to go left to right. We need a free body diagram. If we want the particle to go straight through, we need to have an acceleration of zero in the up and down direction. So let's see what the forces are. For a positive charge, the electric field will push it up to the top, so we'll call that positive, so that's Fe. Now to balance that, we need a magnetic field pushing down. Well, we already said the magnetic field is out of the page. Let's just verify that will give us a force in the down direction. You put your four fingers in this direction. You put your palm facing out. And yep, your thumb points down, which gives you a magnetic force in the down direction. So we'll call it negative. We will then substitute in the values. So we have QE minus QVB equals zero. Oh, and here's our free body diagram. Okay, can't miss that. Notice this, the uh, lengths of the forces are the same because we just want the particle moving perfectly horizontal. So velocity is E over B. Only particles with a velocity that equals the magnitude of the electric field divided by the, magne the magnitude of the magnetic field will pass straight through. And since we have these little bars here and we just have this narrow slit in the middle, we call this a velocity selector because we're selecting particles with the proper velocity that we want to analyze. The second part of the mass spectrometer, and that's over here in the blue, this is a great diagram, again from hyperphysics. This has a magnetic field pointing out of the page with the same magnitude as the magnetic field in the velocity selector. Atoms reaching the second magnetic field will have the same speed because of the velocity selector. So all the atoms or molecules or whatever what's coming in here have the same velocity. There is no electric field in this region. What happens to the speed of the atoms or particles once they're in the semicircle? Think back to the earlier chapter on motion of charges due to a magnetic field. The magnetic field in stage two, that's what we're calling this guy here, will exert a centripetal force on the charges entering it. The force is perpendicular to the atom's motion at all times, so no work is done on the atoms and their speed stays constant. And this is, we should have talked about this earlier, but here's where you ionize your particles, whether they're atoms, molecules, whatever. You accelerate them with a potential difference, and you'll see some of the uh, homework problems with that. And you'll have the voltage, the accelerating voltage is equal to the electric field times the distance that they're accelerated. You have your velocity selector, and finally you have stage two over here. So everybody's moving with a constant speed. We now want to relate the mass of the atoms to where they are detected. And when we look at this picture, everybody comes in over here, and depending on their mass, they are bent with different radii. Okay, they all try and make a circle, but what we do is we cut them off at the semicircle piece here, and we put detectors. And these detectors will tell us where they hit, what their value of R is, okay, because this, let's see, the radius of their orbit, I'm sorry, let's just erase some of that, that's too hard to see. The radius of their orbit is this, right, R, but how far are they away from, from where they started? Well, they're 2R, okay? So when you measure this, 
you would cut that in half to use in our equation. And then the detectors will tell you how many of them struck that point. So we can tell the quantity of atoms with that mass, and we can also tell their mass. So let's start with Newton's second law right here. And since we have a centripetal force, it's equal to mv squared over r. We know the magnetic field force, right, because this is b, so the force is going to be qvb. And this is the same magnetic field that was over in a velocity selector, just so we get a nice answer here. So qvb is mv squared over r. We solve for m. One last step, because we never really measure the velocity, do we? But we do know that's equal to e over b from the velocity selector. And here's our final answer. m is qrb squared over e. So what's constant here? e, b squared, and q. And look what we're relating, m to r. So once we find this distance, we can tell what the mass of the atoms are. And then depending on how many hits they got into the detector, we can tell their relative proportion to the other masses that were inserted through the velocity selector.